you go out to get hosting, you're going to be wondering which ones do I need to do, which options are best for me. Um, so basically, shared web hosting, um, it's something commonly offered on the internet and it's what most people use. Um, it's when you have more than one user account on a server. Um, so for example, HostGator, as a lot of people have heard about, they have a low end pack package offering shared web hosting. A package you know, where you can get unlimited websites and domains, we're talking for you know, $12 a month or so, which is very low cost. Um, you could have you know a few other domains, a couple other. They have a lower end package. It's seven dollars a month. You know, so for anybody starting out, shared web hosting is almost definitely going to be the way to go. In fact, I know some very successful marketers um, that still use shared web hosting that don't do dedicated hosting that still use shared web hosting with huge amounts of bandwidth. You know, that's being transferred and moved around. So. Don't ever think, you know, and get caught up and think that you need a hundred dollar a month hosting package right off the bat. A uh, twelve dollar a month hosting package, a uh, five dollar a month package, whatever it is for a shared web hosting, should be almost ninety some percent of people starting out and launching their business, and even seasoned marketers are going to go with the shared web hosting account. Um, there's reseller hosting for those wondering. Um, it's basically a type of web hosting that positions you as a webmaster. So it's like if you wanted to host websites for other people, uh, but if you are brand new and starting out, then you probably don't even want to venture into this field. Um, but if you are established and have a business, reseller hosting basically allows you to sell packages to maybe your customers, maybe buy things from you. Um, you could actually be your own little web hosting company and maintain things for them. So say it costs you $25 a month to host 10 accounts, you know, and say each one of those accounts pays you $25 a month, you're profiting, you know, around $225 a month for all the to host people's websites, you know. Um, if you were going to do something like that to local businesses and things like that, that's what reseller hosting is. Um, basically, VPS hosting, it's a virtual private server, and this type of hosting service allows the server to run on its own with its own dedicated machine. Um, you really don't need to do much with that one. Um, same thing with dedicated server. That's more of a high-end web hosting uh, solution. Um, in this particular case, you're leasing a server that is configured to your specifications, and this would include memory, disk space, drive space, CPU, operating system. That's very expensive, um, but a lot of people that have a huge amount of traffic and things like that, they go with a dedicated solution. But again, you are definitely going to want to go with a shared web hosting plan when you're first starting out. So web hosting for beginners, as we said, shared hosting is more than adequate to meet your needs. Um, you really may never need to move to semi-dedicated or dedicated. Um, so basically, if you're at a point where you need to upgrade, you'll know when that point comes, and that means your business growth and revenue are going to justify the additional cost. So I don't, you know, I don't want to see anybody thinking they need reseller hosting or dedicated hosting when they're starting out. You're just fine with the twelve dollar a month. Steer clear of the $300 a month hosting options or $100 a month. You don't need them when you're starting out. Um, if you are starting, go with a shared hosting plan. So some good web hosting features, must like domains. I wanted to share with you a few good web hosting features that you need to keep an eye out for. Um, you need a web hosting service that is reliable, feature rich with cPanel, and has 24-7 support available for you. That is so important, the 24-7 support. Um, I've personally been on the phone, other marketers have been on the phone at you know seven you know or seven o'clock in the morning, um, three o'clock in the morning, um, two o'clock in the morning because your websites are down. People can't download files, people can't visit your website. For whatever reason, it's really nice to have, be able to call on somebody um, even over a weekend time. It's very important to be able to do that. Um, disk space, um, so this is another feature you'll probably see. Um, this refers to the amount of file storage available for your files and scripts and everything like that. Um, the actual desired available disk space would be unlimited, and it may sound silly, but most hosting companies now offer an unlimited package that's very inexpensive, and it's on a shared hosting plan. Um, HostGator has one, and I know Bluehost has one. They have very good unlimited packages. Uh, bandwidth, um, again, unlimited is good here. It's basically a measurement of the data flow to and from your web hosting account. So if you have a picture that's one megabyte to download, every time somebody goes to your, which would be a very large picture, but every time somebody visits your website, that would be a megabyte um, of bandwidth being used up, basically. You know, it's a rough way to look at it. Um, so again, the ideal desired bandwidth would be unlimited. Um, and they, you put quotes around that because 
it's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet where um, when they feel like you have hit um, your limit, then they can tell you to, to calm things down a little bit and things like that. But again, if you're at a spot where you're using tons of bandwidth, your money is coming in so you can justify the expense. So don't ever be concerned about running out of bandwidth or disk space um, you know, unless you're doing an enormous product launch. Um, but most marketers, even marketers that do very large product launches, six-figure product launches, they're still using shared hosting in, on many occasions. So um, don't think that you need to rush out and get the big ones. cPanel, I, you know, there's some hosting companies that do not provide it, um, but you really need a cPanel if you really want to make your life easier. Um, cPanel, it's called cPanel or Control Panel. Um, it basically, I mean, all of them have their version of it, but there's a certain version actually called cPanel. It basically allows you to, you know, manage your websites, your databases, your emails. That's where you manage your website. You can even track your stats, your web stats, your traffic, your downloads. I mean, all sorts of stuff on your, on, you know, a cPanel, and it's very easy to use and work with. So um, you can also like within one click install things like WordPress, install like your own help desk, support desk. I mean, very. It makes your life much, much easier. So, cPanel or Control Panel. You know, try to find one with cPanel web hosting. Again, the main major ones will have that HostGator, Bluehost, um, IX Web Hosting. Any of the other major ones that you've heard about, they will have a cPanel type hosting. Um, it's a center hub of your website, basically. Um, reliable, obviously, is such a huge factor. Most of these large companies have a 99.9 percent .9 uptime. Um, you know, it's it's really they advertise that in most cases it might be 99.7 and things like that. But you know, in all actuality, it's much better to have 24/7 support. Because if your site's down for an hour and you catch it on the weekend, at least you can get it resolved that day instead of having to wait. You know, till they're back in business hours at eight o'clock or nine o'clock Monday morning. You know, so then your site's down all weekend. So um, reliability is huge, and that's where it comes in the 24/7 support. So some other features your hosting will have, it will have email. Uh, basically, it allows you to create an email associated to your domain, which would help with branding recognition. Um, so in the example um, that we're going to set up here, we, we had the domain dogbreedlist.net, dogbreedlist.net. I think it's a great domain. Um, and if I wanted to brand that, I could say john at John Smith at dogbreedlist.net. If I wanted people to, to really look at me as the dog breed list expert if that's what my business was about you know whatever your business name so it could be you know um, Sally May at your domain name dot com you know your website dot com that kind of thing so that's what email um, offers when they say they offer email um, most of them will offer a pop email um, it's really um, sometimes referred to as pop three uh, it's a means of sending and retrieving email over the internet so uh, most of the time, if you have Microsoft Outlook or an Apple with Apple Mail on it, you know exactly you know what pop email is because they've asked you about that. Um, you want to have unlimited pop emails if they'll allow it. Um, sometimes you can do forwarding of emails, which is really cool because you can basically make your business look like a huge enterprise, um, and even though you're a small person, uh, just a small one-person operation. You can actually have an email for sales, for support for information, for inquiries, all sorts of things, and they could all be going to the same inbox, which is you, but it makes your company look huge, and that's where having email options really comes into play. So it's a very neat feature. Um, and again, domains to be hosted is another thing that they will ask you or tell you about on their feature section. And again, that one, the best option is unlimited, and the unlimited packaging that Bluehost and HostGator offers gives you the option of having unlimited domains, so you can have unlimited domains, it allows you to have unlimited you know bandwidth usage give or take and unlimited um, file storage which is outstanding and you know they do monitor that for abuse you know so that's you know so unlimited is used like within quotes but you know literally an unlimited plan would last you for longer than you you could even realize so and it's very inexpensive very good cost um, subdomains it's a domain that is part of a primary domain so, for example, if I, you know, the dogbreedlist.net, I might have, um, you know, myvideos.dogbreedlist.net, or I might have videos.dogbreedlist.net, you know, without the www in there, or you could have, um, you know, let's say your your name at dog 
your name dot dogbreedlist dot net. That's what a subdomain is. In case you're wondering, um, in most cases you really don't need to use them. It's mostly important to worry about how many domains can you get on there. And if you're planning on having 100, 200, 300 domains, um, you're going to be just fine with an unlimited package in most cases. Recommended web hosting services, HostGator.com. HostGator.com is a great uh, recommended website uh, hosting service. They're low cost, 24-7 support, reliable, unlimited hosting available. Um, cPanel with Fantastica, which is very important. And then Bluehost, they're another low cost provider, great support, again reliable, unlimited hosting with cPanel. They also have Fantastico and Simple Scripts, and Simple Scripts is actually kind of like Fantastico, but it's a one click install of even more software programs. So um, you can kind of look at both those options to consider, uh, but both of those really give you everything that you could want with your web hosting needs. Okay, so. Um, now the final thing related to do the hosting and domain aspect of this is your domain management. So with the domain purchase you need to, to now change the DNS servers to point to your hosting account. And so in a second here I'm actually going to go off the screen again and show you step by step how to actually take the domain that you purchased and actually point it to your web hosting at HostGator, Bluehost, IX Web Hosting, any, whichever hosting company you have selected to go with or you currently use. Um, you know, so you're basically logging into your domain, change the DNS, which stands for the name servers, to that of your web hosting account, and then once your domain is pointed, you just want to verify by testing. And so that's the process that I'm going to go through next. Okay, so we're inside our GoDaddy account, and we want to pull up our domain. So you just want to click on Manage, which will allow you basically to manage your domain. So um, just go over here and you want to go to domain manager and it's going to be they have a left hand navigation and a top side navigation on GoDaddy so we're going to see if that domain already made its way in here so let's find it here dogbreedlist.net there it is and let's just put a check mark in there now what I'm going to do is I've checked that there and I'm going to come on in here and where it says name servers you see the stack of gold coins it looks like it says name servers you just want to select set name servers so I just put in a check mark and then select set name servers set name servers and this again is how I take my domain name and point it to my web hosting company now this may not sound attractive to you may not be exciting but unfortunately it is a part of having an online business and a lot of people get stuck at this phase of the game so um, so right here it's gonna give you several options you wanna choose that you have a hosting account with these domain or excuse me I have a spe specific name servers for, for my domains specific name servers meaning you're hosting elsewhere well what I've got here is basically a sample of what it looks like when you first get your hosting account and I'm going to come on in here and insert that into my domain manager. Oops. So let's go back here and set the name servers. So it'll take just a moment here. and we're just going to paste this information in that came from our hosting company okay and then we're simply going to choose OK and it'll validate and then it will submit the information typically they'll give you name servers that go in succession so you have NS303 and NS304 every um, hosting company will be slightly different uh, most of them will give it to you upon login to your cPanel or in your welcome email as you saw that I was showing you there um, and it will take a few minutes for these changes to take effect and so up on my screen now is HostGator and for this example HostGator is the chosen hosting company to use so uh, what you've got here is HostGator and you'll see the different hosting plan options on here 
And in order to point the domain, you will, will have already needed your hosting account set up. But HostGator, I'll just show you some of the different features they have. Um, you can just choose the web hosting tab and they will give you like a side-by-side -side comparison and most hosting companies do this of their different packages I know that Bluehost for example they give you a variety of different options or excuse me they give you one main option and um, they have a you know they're very very reliable as well so they'll say starting at a certain number but that typically means um, that you are going to need you know like if, if you're doing it on a monthly basis it's gonna cost you fourteen ninety five a month um, this would be if you, you know the discount comes when you do like three years in advance I recommend you do whatever makes you feel comfortable most people just do the month to month or if they're really on a budget or they just pay for it a year in advance okay so now that we've got HostGator here I'm gonna go ahead and log in um, to my HostGator account so this will take just a moment here okay so let's just log on in here so you just need to go to your main domain name and then do forward slash cpanel because they're gonna ask you for a domain when you set up your hosting and for them you're going to just go to your domain forward slash cpanel um, if you're going with Bluehost you actually just go to bluehost.com and log in that way so they're all they're all kinda different in how they operate but they will explain to you very um, thoroughly how it's done uh, but almost every one of the major hosting accounts is actually going to give you um, you know your own name servers your own access details and all that so you're gonna have everything you need uh, but ever the major ones are gonna give you cpanel which you're actually gonna see here in just a moment so this is your websites cpanel or control panel and what we're doing here now is we need to actually take the domain name that we just pointed the name servers and we need to add it into our cpanel right now so I'm gonna go right on in here and scroll all the way down here to where it says domains so we'll give it just a moment to load up here okay so we're inside cpanel now and what's gonna happen here is we need to look for domain after it all loads up you want to look for domains and it's going to be found at the heading here and again we're trying to tie the domain name to uh, that we purchased to our web hosting account here so I'm just going to go here to add on domains and what I'm going to do here is just click add domain and where it says new domain what I'm going to enter here is the domain name that we purchased. So very, very simple. Dogbreedlist.net. Okay, so dogbreedlist.net is the new domain. Um, it'll ask you for a subdomain FTP username, and you can just go with the domain there. That works just fine. Um, document root. Just do like a forward slash in there. and public HTML will be just fine um, password just put in a basic password here that you remember and it'll say it'll give you a basis on how strong that is but you don't have to worry too much about that okay so it'll be just a moment so it's going through the process of adding the domain right now so it says it has been created and now we've added the domain so we pointed the name servers and we added the domain to our hosting account um, so that's really the process of tying the domain so you know the most the biggest thing is to get your domain and get your hosting and set it up within your account so I'm gonna jump back into the training and we're gonna go over how to work with an autoresponder which is another very important part of getting your online business going so the third uh, most important basic step is to set up your autoresponder um, and for those that are, are not familiar with it it's an online web application which provides 
you know, you as a marketer, a means of storing and retrieval of prospect and buyer contact information. Um, in the case of the dog breed list website, this could be people that might be interested in dogs, they might be interested in dog training products, um, dog breeds. You could sell them all sorts of informational products even in that market. Um, an autoresponder literally can you know, be set up and run your entire business on autopilot, hence the name. This is an optional step, but it's also a very important part of having an online business because at some point you want to do list building. Um, it can help you generate untold volumes of money if accurately used. And it's by far a tool of necessity. Some people say it may not be. Um, it's really up to you, but it can really increase your profit. So um, reliability is obviously very important with autoresponders. Um, some common features they have, they have website sign-up forms. You can maintain multiple lists with them or unlimited lists. Um, one that comes to mind is Aweber. They allow you to have unlimited lists within their autoresponder. Um, you can have email newsletters, email web analytics, and it's really... Um, you know just a very good uh, reliable service um, you know they, they do a good job of responsibly keeping their service clean of spammers uh, which basically allows them to stay whitelisted at major internet service providers like you know even like AOL um, Yahoo Mail different things like that um, allows more of your emails that you promote to be delivered so these are things to consider. Um, two that are most highly recommended are Aweber and GetResponse. Um, you can just go to Google and look for those. Um, there's obviously plenty more out there, but those two offer great support and they offer an amazing service um, and product. That actually wraps up this entire training for today.